Today we're going to talk about how Bitcoin UTXOs can ruin your day. Hello, my name is Steven. If you're new to the channel, I've been studying Bitcoin for the past three years and currently I'm in my third year doing mortgage underwriting. My goal with this channel is to condense and distill all the information that I've learned over the past three years and make them into videos and share them with you guys. My goal is to help anybody who is looking to study and start diving into the rabbit hole that is Bitcoin as well as personal finance. Bitcoin UTXO is something that I've spent a lot of time studying because for me, when I first started using Bitcoin, it was a very complex and confusing topic. And after so many years of using Bitcoin and after sending hundreds of Bitcoin transactions, I think I can finally put in my own words what UTXOs are and explain it to you guys in a short form video. So let's get started. Bitcoin UTXOs are essentially unspent money that's in our wallet. Take $20 for example. $20 in your wallet can be one $20 bill. It can also be two $10 bills. It can also be four $5 bills. And it can be made of loonies or toonies or $1 and $2. And it can even be made out of quarters. And in this analogy, each bill or coin would equal to one UTXO. And for Bitcoin, UTXOs can come in all sizes. It can range from one Satoshi to 21 million Bitcoin. So looping back to the $20 example that we did pre previously, a $20 bill would equal to one UTXO forming $20. Two $10 bills would be two UTXOs forming the $20 value. And $5 would be four $5 forming one $20 value. And that would mean four UTXOs forming a $20 value. And when we use quarters, it would be 80 quarters forming a $20 value. And in this case, it would be 80 UTXOs forming a $20 value. And on the Bitcoin network, the fees are calculated on a per UTXO basis. Now looping back to that $20 value again, if we're using one $20 bill to represent that $20 value, we're charged fees for one UTXO. Now, if we use two $10 bills to send the same amount, which is also $20, then we're charged fees on a two UTXO basis. If we use $5 bills, we're charged on a four UTXO basis and so on and so on. And if we're using quarters, then we're being charged on an 80 UTXO basis. And since sending one UTXO of however much Bitcoin costs the same amount of fees, like say, sending an UTXO of one Satoshi will cost the same as sending one UTXO of 21 million Bitcoin, then it's essential that we control the amount of UTXOs that we use when sending a transaction. In a perfect scenario, we would always want to send only one UTXO that would minimize our fees when using the network. The reason is because, like I said before, if we're using one UTXO to send the amount of Bitcoin that we want, then we're only charged on a one UTXO basis. However, if we're sending the same amount of Bitcoin, but we're using 100 UTXOs, then even though we're sending the same amount of Bitcoin, we're spending a hundred times the amount of fees that, that we would have paid if we were sending only one UTXO. Now when fees are low, it doesn't really matter because we're not really paying a lot of fees anyways. However, as adoption increases for Bitcoin and demand for block space also increases, that means fees are bound to increase as well. Therefore, it's always prudent for us to control the amount of UTXOs that we have and make sure that they're of at least a minimum of a certain size of Bitcoin. And when fees become so high that they exceed the amount of Bitcoin that's represented in the, in the UTXO, 
then that UTXO essentially becomes dust. For example, say you want to send 100 Satoshi to somebody, and the fees for sending that transaction on the network cost 1,000 Satoshi. Then it doesn't really make sense for you to send that 100 Satoshi and pay 1,000 Satoshi as fees. And we also have to keep in mind that since fees are calculated using units of Bitcoin, it doesn't really matter if the value of Bitcoin increases in the future because we're using Bitcoin as a unit of account. We're not using dollar value as a unit of account. And this is where UTXOs can ruin your day. Imagine having one Bitcoin, but it's formed by using 1 million UTXOs. That means you have to pay 1 million times the fees to send that Bitcoin than somebody who has a Bitcoin with only one UTXO. Therefore, it's super important for us to manage the size of our UTXOs. We want to make sure that there are at least a certain amount of Bitcoin so that in the future they don't become dust. And there are ways to mitigate this problem. The first thing that I would do is to make sure that whenever I'm sending Bitcoin to my cold wallet, I'm sending Bitcoin that's at least 0.005 in size. This way that in the future I know that no matter what I buy, it's, it can essentially be covered. 0.005 Bitcoin right now is around 300 US dollars, 400 Canadian dollars. I'm pretty sure in the future it's going to be worth a lot more. And the second way to mitigate this problem is to consolidate our UTXOs when network fees are low. Say when network fees are one sat per V byte, two sats per V byte. I would create a transaction with all of the UTXOs that I have and send it again to myself. Because when I combine those UTXOs and send it to myself, they become one UTXO. So for example, if I send 10 0.1 Bitcoin UTXOs to me, I would receive one UTXO that's equal to one Bitcoin. And in the future, when I want to send that Bitcoin, I will only pay transaction fees for one UTXO instead of 10 UTXOs. And the third way to mitigate this problem is to utilize the Liquid Network. You can choose to send small amounts of Bitcoin to the Liquid Network and hold Liquid Bitcoin. And once you've gathered enough Bitcoin, you can then unpack your Liquid Bitcoin and send it on-chain into your cold storage. It also helps to learn how to use wallets that let us select which UTXOs that we would like to spend. Wallets nowadays, they don't really show us how much UTXO we have or how much Bitcoin each of our UTXO is worth. Therefore, we don't really know exactly which UTXO we're spending. So it's always best to learn how to use a wallet that shows us how many UTXOs are available in our wallet and how much each, each UTXOs are worth. This way we can pick whichever one we want to spend. Now this method is a little bit complicated, but I think in the long run, learning how to use wallets like the Sparrow wallet and the Blockstream Green desktop wallet will be very helpful in saving you transaction fees in the future. And another thing that I think we should note is you don't really want to make your UTXOs too big because when you're spending an UTXO, the person who's receiving your Bitcoin can see where the change is going. Therefore, we want to have UTXOs of all sizes. And if you like this video and you want to learn more about the anatomy of a Bitcoin transaction, as well as how using mempool.space can help you save in fees, you can click here and watch my previous video. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.